All through his career, Kevin Bacon has never stayed away from spooky content for too long. Every now and then, he will bless us with skewered bacon, smoky bacon, reheated bacon, hollow bacon, and you should have left bacon. In 1999, he starred in the supernatural story Stir of Echoes, which I'm sure many people watching would agree gave us the tastiest bacon of all. Horror cinema achieved a certain level of class in the late 60s and 70s. The genre began to attract respectable A-list actors, such as Gregory Peck, Gregory Peck, to star in spooky slow burn chillers and thrillers. The late 90s and early 2000s saw a resurgence of this particular horror brand, with huge stars like Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, Robert De Niro, and Harrison Ford getting involved. Stir of Echoes may have been overshadowed by the release of The Sixth Sense just a month prior, but as my mama always used to say, there's more than enough room for two entertaining films about kids seeing dead people in one summer release period. Stir of Echoes was based on a 1958 novel by the legendary Richard Matheson, adapted for the screen and directed by David Kep, one of Hollywood's highest paid screenwriters, and the guy whose surname I always want to pronounce as Coeb. Bacon plays Tom, a middle-aged phone line engineer who feels a deep resentment for his plain existence. This bitterness has frankly turned him into a knobhead. For example, a few minutes into the film, his wife reveals she is once again pregnant. Yahoo! His reaction? Bummer. So. Bummer. 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 You want something to spice up your life, Tom? Well, how about a son who is being constantly harassed by a ghost who's not paying the rent? Better yet, his power is hereditary. And he didn't catch it from his mother. Hint, hint. During a house party, the skeptical, hostile Tom agrees to be hypnotized by his spiritually minded sister in law, played by Ileana Douglas, aka Jess Goldblum. She leaves his mind with an open door, and Tom unwillingly becomes a receiver to the other side. Haunted by a variety of fun visions, premonitions, and sixth sensing. He quickly realises the ghost in his house is trying to communicate something. There is a tasty secret to be uncovered. Finally, Tom has found a purpose in life, but as this mission consumes him, his family worries he's going too far. Who knows, if he doesn't take a step back, maybe he will even end up kicking the bucket. If you are searching for a breezy horror experience that won't completely bum you out, gross you out, or keep you up at night, Stir of Echoes would be a solid choice. The trail of breadcrumbs that are left for Tom and the audience create a captivating adventure, and the spooks are on the lighter side and well spaced out. The ghost is never truly terrifying, nor do I think she is supposed to be, but the filmmakers did a great job with her. The actress was filmed at a higher speed, and directed to move slower. The footage was then returned to regular speed, producing a slightly off effect to her movements. The hypnosis scenes are superb at drawing you in, the environment eerily shifting with the sisters' descriptions, stuffed with detail. The walls are literally painted black, tying into the song Painted Black, a song that holds a special significance in the plot. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The hypnosis plot also comes off as a little corny, in an acceptable 1950s Matheson way. When Kevin Bacon is floating about in a chair, you're not exactly going to be shitting yourself. How did we get into this mess? <laughs> this era of lighter ghost horror could then almost be described 
as safe horror. There will be fleeting stabs of terror, but on the whole, you get a thrilling ride that coasts on the threat of further brief spooks. It is a good gateway into the genre for younger audiences, who have aged out of animated kiddie horror, but are not quite ready for the blood and boobs of true adult horror. Perhaps I feel this way, as this film's cousin, What Lies Beneath, was very much one of the most important gateway films for my childhood self. Why you? Okay, you scoundrels, listen up. It is time to give my top three films of the 1990s from the movies featured in this series. In no particular order, I present to you 1992 Dust Devil, a pretty unique tale with striking locations and a memorable villain. 1993 Kronos, a stunning debut from a director who had become a master of the genre. And 1995, The Day of the Beast, an amazing concept that delivers both a gripping race against time and a wonderful sense of humour. Let me know your favourites from the 10 films selected for this series, or indeed any other shout out from this decade you wish to offer. Until the next time then, where we will be pushing into a new century of terror.